Okay, here we go. We will start soon. It will start soon. And we will be... We will head out on the highway looking for adventure. That's our line here. Your trailer is ready. At the loading area, which appears to be... Oh, there. <coughs> so good. Okay. There's the trailer. I'll do a thing like this. So we don't have a blind side backup. Hang out the window. Hey, good day. I did enjoy my Thanksgiving. Um, it was very low key. Uh, no big fancy dinner. I didn't get any invites from my family or friends. <coughs> so I went up to my local and had some beer and wine and chatted with the owner and some uh, regulars who were there. We had a nice time. I did a bit of reading, a bit of writing with my one of my new pens, and uh, yeah, it was nice. It was a good, uh, good evening. No. No, it doesn't necessarily suck. It was a good thing. It was okay. I had a good evening. My son might have invited me if I'd shamed him into it, but that's okay. Being, uh, being a uh, self-employed writer, then weekends and holidays and stuff like this don't really mean that much to me, so I'm good. No, I didn't even have dinner up there. No, I just went up there. I had a couple of, uh, I had a few, you know, a couple of beer, had some wine. Chatted, chatted with Vinny, uh, admired the red wine he has on discount in his happy hour. And, uh, <coughs> um, set up a plan with him to get a case of it. He said, yeah, yeah, he can get me a case from his supplier. Because you can't buy it at the liquor store. Um, his supplier his supplier in February had was going to sort of like give him a low-cost a low cost red wine. Going to give him a low-cost red wine for uh, his happy hour. And he couldn't get it. So he instead gave him a more expensive one for the same price. So and that's what Vinny's been serving. And it's... It's really good. It's really good. So, <laughs> I mean, for five dollars a glass, it's you know, it's really good. So I'll get a case of it. He said, as long as you can uh, assure me that you won't stop coming here. I said, no, 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 no. I'll stick with me here. So, uh, Brampton to Hamilton. What were you going from? Why would it take you three hours to drive from Brampton to Hamilton? Were you like, did you have a horse and a carriage? Oh, I know what I was going to do before I do anything more. I was going to look at the world map to see, yes, we're leaving. And I want to do small roads, I think, just in case. Uh, will that ignore Moscow? I don't know. Uh, 1800k, 23 hours. Okay. So, what happens if we say we don't want that? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I know. Uh, oh, 2100 at 33. Oh, big difference. Yeah, 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 okay. That's good. We're missing Moscow because we've been there. Yeah, so we're wandering down through the countryside. I like that. I'll take it. 
Yeah, yeah, my uh, my trip to my local is like a 10 minute walk. So, definitely not a three hour drive. As much as you like driving, I'm sure. For ten, look one to forty. All of a sudden, they're sliding on the brakes and swerving somewhere. Lost a fridge. Oh, fuck. <laughs> lost a fridge. <laughs> uh, but I used a bungee cord. Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> sorry. Not, not, not funny, but funny. Mm. Although I hit a mattress once. Heading out to Orleans uh, in at night, so it was dark, and the uh, trailer in front of me, he lost a double bed mattress. And it was rolling down the highway towards me. And I, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was maybe a tarpaulin or something. Like, I couldn't really tell what it was. And I wasn't comfortable with swerving around it because there was cars next to me. And I drove over it, and it was a mattress with coil springs. The springs punctured the lines. It had a van, so the springs punctured one of the lines running back to the heater in the back of the van. So I lost all my fluid. So I had to get the van towed and get that fixed. And insurance um, wouldn't cover it. They said I, I could have avoided it. I could have. Yes, I could have jammed on the brakes if I'd known that guy was going to lose his freaking mattress. I also could have swerved and driven the guy next to me into the ditch, but my truck, my van would have been okay. Yes, we could have done that, so... Assholes. Yeah. July, poor lady diamond. She applied with full truck and sliced her roof as her head. I know. I know. It could be scary. And the guy will get charged for having an unsecured lo load as opposed to manslaughter. Because. If you got a load not secured properly and it flies off and, and kills somebody, that's um, that's not an accident. An accident would be if it was secured properly, and lightning hit your your trailer and blew all the bungee cords off and the plywood flew in the air. That's an accident. Uh, Unintentional manslaughter. Well, I think it was un uh, intentional. If his if his load was uh, not secured properly, then it's intentional. Sorry, I'm picky about accidental. Because like, he chose not to put enough things on his load. No. So. Hopefully he got sued. So here I am driving, I'm ranting. Here I am driving in Eastern Expansion, which is a standalone map, uh, ETS, that has Rust map and Russian open space. It does Russian open space all the way from the east uh, in Japan, basically, in Russia, all the way to the west into Poland. I'm driving from St. Petersburg down south. The scale is 1 to 10 instead of 1 to 20. Yeah, second degree. I know, yeah, yeah, good point, Tracker. So yeah, 1 in 10 means that it shows up there 33 hours. 33 hours in game, which means 
Alright. Yeah, yeah. IRL is going to be 3.3 .3 hours. So this is driving through the same countryside that Rust Map has, but it seems... I'm not sure if they've reused it. Reused it. Seems uh, nicely detailed. I've got my Scania truck. I'm pulling over. Anytime you want to let me in, thank you. Perhaps it was that flashing light that confused you. Why is he flashing a light in my eyes? It's blinding me. It's because I'm pulling into the lane? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you could have changed lanes to let me in. No, no, no. I'm in this lane and I'm happy here. My latest, uh, my latest, dear friends, uh, thing is fountain pens. Uh, anybody out there of, <coughs> excuse me, anybody out there a fountain pen fan? I have four pens now and four different jars of ink. Please pull in. Where do you pull in? Here? Where do you pull in? I could. Oh, okay, at the scale ahead. I was looking, where's the... Did you mean here? I don't think so. Hey, Chris, how are you? Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, where's the way station? Where the hell is the way station? I'm not seeing the way station. So yes, happy uh, Thanksgiving or happy Columbus Day. The day on which you discover you celebrate the f the discovery. In 1492, Columbus discovered Joe. Hey, Joe. Uh, Mike, yes. It's Mike and Joe and Chris. Um, we're celebrating also in the United States the fact that in 1492, Columbus discovered something. What quiz, quiz for people, what did he discover in 1492? Not that it wasn't already discovered by the inhabitants. <laughs> Mike, Joe, and Chris, the super group, yes. Not that it was already discovered by the inhabitants, but what did he discover in 1492? <laughs> I will need you to let everyone. Thank you. Why have we got this bypass up there still? Um, do I go like this? Do I get it back then? Oh, it's still there. Well, I guess they're still waiting for me to go to bypass it. Oh, why is that there? Nobody can answer my question? Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, sneaking out. We're just gonna we're just gonna crawl out here because we don't really care. There. Ah Well, he did not discover America. Today is Columbus Day in America, in the United States. Yeah. I beg to differ. Today is Columbus Day in the United States, is it not? I thought today was Columbus Day.
Let's get that clarified first. And then I wonder when the hell this way da station bypass service is going to piss off on my screen. Twenty twelve Ford Fusion V six cell top. Super clean, sixteen hundred six K. Ah, well, I mean the doc that's that's so, so it's that's funny yet sad. Uh, that uh, hopefully you didn't buy it, Joe. Because yes, that's the that's the thing with this tracking now. I don't know why people don't don't disclose that. Because they have to do this this mandatory, they have to do this mandatory disclosure or whatever when you buy a car. They have to do like a search of the of the record, and it's going to show what happened. <laughs> yes, yes. Today's Columbus Day. No, my point, uh, my point, Chris, is that Columbus discovered the Americas, the Americas, in 1492 which does not mean, mean that he landed in Boston. He actually landed in um, somewhere in the Bahamas. By strange coincidence, I was uh, drinking with my friend uh, Dylan at my local this evening or this afternoon, who is from the Bahamas. And he said uh, that uh, they have renamed it in the Bahamas because of all the uh, the bad connotations of what Columbus did when he came there. They've renamed it Colum Heroes Day. Uh, so, yes, and Thanksgiving is on in November in the U.S. Um, For, for the United States Americans, for the uh, Canadians that live in the Americas, this is our this is our uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, so tomorrow you can see a 2005 Honda CRV. Oh, well, my experience with Hondas is that young young they're bought by young kids who burn the shit out of the engine. So that every time a Honda passes you, you hear it coming because they've got a huge sound system in it, just booming the shit out of the windows. And then after they pass you, you can smell the oil from them revving the shit out of the little engine. So, uh, but I suspect you know that. <laughs> if, yes. If the back end is blue smoke, no, it's a diesel. No, it's not a diesel. It's a gas engine. You've just rubbed the shit out of it and blown the rings. So. And when you come to exhaust, you're leaving the exhaust alone. No, no, I mean the exhaust. Well, that's true. I mean, no, no what I meant was uh, the exhaust is an indicator of how well, the, how badly they've treated the engine, but. Yeah, I know the Honda. Some people get a little Honda and they put a big hardcore loud exhaust system on it. Not because it particularly gives them less, less back pressure and more horsepower, just because they want to be cool. But you're already cool, right? So. Okay, so let's, uh, how do I get rid of this waste station bypass service? This is going to be annoying. Can I not, can I, uh, maybe this is what I have to do. Sorry, folks. One owner dealer maintains, so that'd be good. That'd be good. Sorry, folks, we're just restarting to get rid of that annoying thing about the uh, bypass service. Because I'm not sure even that that was the way station. I mean, there was way scale 
at the gas station I passed, but... I don't know. Let's see what we got here. Oh, it's still there. Hmm. Uh, this button. Hmm. I guess that's going to stay there until the next time we pass a way station. And it gets to clear it. Annoying, eh? Right in the middle of your freaking screen. Three, two, one, train tracks. Um, oh, yes, I see red. And oh, it's a freight train. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, eight. I got a mod that gives me more freight cars, but it doesn't seem to give me much difference. Usually it's seven. Sometimes you get eight. I'm supposed to get like 20. Or 20. <laughs> yes, yes, we do get pretty long trains here in Canada. Uh, especially, uh, well, I was going to say, especially east of the Rockies, where it's not hard to pull several, kilo several kilometers. But even then, the Rockies, what they do is they just pop on more engines. Right? I mean, I've got that... I've got that mod, or that game. Train Simulator. Uh, so what do we got? We've got uh, 31 hours to drive, and uh, which would be, it's a 10 to 1, so I've got 3 hours, so, yep. No, in Saskatchewan, they can up to 4K, because it's fairly flat, and they just, once you get up rolling, you're just, or just going through the Rockins, Rockies. Well, going through the Rockies, they might split it. <clears throat> but I've got my my train simulator program. In my train simulator program, I can pull like a hundred cars through the Rockies. Now it gives you several engines, but still, uh, the challenge is not only to get going, but to stay going up a hill without wheel slip. And then to brake effectively going downhill without losing your uh, air pressure on your brakes. He's on a train. Uh, you set the air pressure for like, I don't know, 10% or something. And if it's not enough, you can set it at 12. If it's too much, you can't set it to 10. If it's 12 and too much, you have to set it to zero. And then wait for the air pressure to build up in all the lines back all through 100 cars. And then set it up to what you want it to be. It's an interesting, interesting challenge. Uh, okay. Thank you, Joe. Have a nice uh, evening yourself. Ta-ta. Have a good day at school tomorrow.
And I'll keep you up to date on when I start my podcasting of my stories. We're getting there. <laughs> I'm going to use Audacity for my recording, filtering, blending, uh, but I have to um, play with it. And meaning I have to, I have to look at some videos as to how you do it. Oh, that's interesting, whatever the hell that thing was. Like a... Well, no, it wasn't the right. Like a big statue with a ramp. Just a sec, I need to send a message to my kids. Hmm. What's happening here? There you go. Sent me kids a note about Thanksgiving. I'm assuming we get another one of these way station bypass services that actually comes on and then clears because it clears. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
держитесь ли. Sixty-one. This is ninety. Oh, we gotta get past this sucker. It's a good place to pass. Solid line and a curve. Looks safe to me. And eighty-eight and a ninety. That's good. Oh, we tipped a bit there. That's good. Maybe 80 is good. Okay. Eighty-five. Let's go eighty-five out of ninety. So we're driving to the countryside. Uh, I have no idea the, whether this is the same, worse or better than the rust map for this area. Um. They may have designed it themselves. They may have just borrowed it from Rust Map. I don't know. I can't remember what it looked like here. It's good, but Rust Map is good too, so. Lots of little villages would be a giveaway. A good thing. Not gonna see that. We're seeing little villages that we don't even see. The sign. But nothing saying discovered. No, we're good. Now, supposedly the game, when it sees what kind of loads you like, it gives you those loads, but... I don't know whether that's speculation or actually something from the developers that said, you know... Yeah, when you do such and such, such percent of this percentage, this is what happens. Oh, okay. Possibly not. Most likely not. She was showing off with these spices drinks earlier, but uh, I've got a bunch of stuff to use up for some cooking, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I think we're going until 8 o'clock, which just, I don't know, it's just, it's tiring. We can drive more tomorrow. Tomorrow is Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come on, I'm going to bypass service. Yeah. Look in. Is there like a, is there an error code? Now this one. Let's look here. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five. That thing. That thing. Take it back. Under trains, thing in the center. I don't know. I don't know. I think we should be good here. It should be. Let's see if we can go to eleven o'clock before we drive into the ditch.
fall asleep there. Fall asleep, Gramps. Let's find a place to pull over and go to sleep. But it would be nice to get a way station thing. Here's the next way station thing. It's, uh... Maybe here. I don't know. See what happens. I need another stack. I'll be back in a sec.
Okay, sorry, I had to have a snack. Some rye toast. That's good enough. So. <laughs> Here we are again. I was reading earlier about the joys of living in the country. I'd love to live in the country in a little cabin all by myself. I'd probably want uh, interweb access to the interwebs, but so I could continue doing this and do my uh, podcasting or do my writing. I would not be able to walk up to my local pub, unfortunately. Or fortunately. I'd probably save a lot of money and uh, lose a lot of weight. And that could be one of the things I used to do, and now I don't do it anymore. I'll have to think about it. I'm renting now. Uh, I'm paying well, fourteen fifty a month plus hydro. Hmm. I could go to a small town. I could go to, like to Perth or something. Up to Almont. I might not be comfortable in a small town. I'd really have to do have to drive to Perth or Almont and spend a few days there. You know, get a B and B, spend a week, see what the town's like. But um, I guess the pressure for this is uh, my landlord. Um, I've got a nice perennial garden in back that my girlfriend has mainly worked to plant over the last several years. My landlord has a new concept. He wants to have, he wants to rip it all up and have planter boxes to make a nice tidy, probably metal planter boxes because they'd be low maintenance and put them in the back. And there'd be like one for vegetables, one for herbs, one for you know, one for my flowers or something like this, so everybody would get a little planter box. Uh, it's gonna look very much sterile. Thank you. So it's going to look more sterile with these just boxes there. Thank you for clearing that damn bypass service. Uh, there'll be less room for gardening if you got little boxes with spaces to walk between them. It's very shaded, so in spite of the best intentions, we're not going to grow a lot of vegetables back there. He's not much of a gardener, so I can't see him maintaining it, doing a good job. He's going to put annuals in, you know, buy a bunch of potted plants, you know, begonias and stuff, and plunk them in, red and white, red and white, red and white. I suspect my uh, raspberries that have been growing along the fence over the years will... Uh, be ripped out and replaced by zinnias or something, so. Plan B is to root up all these perennials, and I'll take them all to my daughter's place. My girlfriend and I can take them to my daughter's place. I haven't asked, but I'm guessing my daughter would love to have a perennial garden, especially if somebody else planted it for her, and if, um, I'd come over every week to help maintain it. 
her kids have seen me more often. So, I'd like that better. And down the down the downstream, it'd be nice to, uh, you know, I'd really just like a cabin in the country. Yeah. Split wood for a wood stove. Garden out back. Deer and rabbits coming in, so I have to get some netting to put around it. I don't know. Hmm. I've often thought of that as a nice thing to have. I suppose whenever you're think oh that's an interesting thing on the left whatever the hell that was uh, whenever you have a dream or whatever well make it happen I guess it involves sending a note to my landlord or no sending a note to the guy who sold me my house years ago or sold my house Tell him, um, well, actually, before that, look at areas I'm thinking of going to and just start driving there. You know, every day go for a drive, spend the day touring around whatever area, check it out. I've always dreamed of that, and I guess my problem is I'm worried that I'm getting less and less fit and wouldn't be able to do it. But if you're living in the country, I have the capacity to be fit. Just more exercise would help, so. Oh, yeah, whatever that sign was, we're doing that. Whatever that sign said, yep, we'd have, we'll have one of those. So, how are we doing here? 11 o'clock. Um, yeah, I think I didn't quit. It's 11 o'clock. Yeah. We're in Ottawa. So, um, let's pull off somewhere. Like here. Whatever the hell this is. Okay. So, Thanks for viewing, folks. Thanks for following. But it's 11 o'clock. I'm tired. And um, I want to do some other things. So I'll be on tomorrow. Uh, thanks for viewing, following, cheering, etc. And uh, we'll catch you tomorrow. Happy Thanksgiving. Well, it's Monday night, the end of Thanksgiving. But still, happy Thanksgiving, folks. Ta-ta.